told you about his discovery of Barnegat Inlet, mm -hmm. and that he looked across the dunes and saw the bay, but he never entered it. When he got, this was a September 2nd, he got on the, on the 4th, he was here at Atlantic Highlands, which is the highest point on the whole East Coast. Then and now. And he was running very low on water. He hadn't re-watered re since he left Amsterdam three months ago. And he figured, with all that height, there's got to be some water in there. So he sent a couple of boats ashore, and lo and behold, he found a huge artesian well, which even today is called Hudson's Spring. And the high school at Atlantic Highlands is Henry Hudson High School. So he watered, and then he got up to, this is really Jamaica, on the 6th of September. And there were a whole bunch of Indians waiting for him. Now the Indians well worshipped a god named Manito. And Manito had a red cape, in Indian lore anyway. So Henry Hudson pulls ashore. By the way, the Half Moon had a poop deck 40 feet high off the water. And the, and the forecastle was 30 feet high. So from the back deck, he could see over the dunes and everything. That's how he wrote so engagingly about the how he loved the, the coast of New Jersey. He said, what a pleasant place, which is apparently how Point Pleasant got its name. Well, anyway, it's <laughs> true. You can read the log, it's online. Robert Jewett was his mate, who wrote this very detailed log. So when he came here, one of his crew said, Henry, Staten Island? <laughs> anyway, they had a huge powwow with these Indians, and Henry comes out of the boat with a red, red cape, cape on! Got it. The Indians went wild! They said, oh my gosh, Manito is here! So, Henry, of course, being a very great gentleman, breaks out the Dutch brandy, and everybody got drunk, and Manahatta, which was the Indian name for Manhattan, means place where we were inebriated. <laughs> so anyway, he comes to the Hudson River, which then had no name, and he says, this has got to be the Northwest Passage to India. So he starts heading up the river, and the river is flowing south, and the wind was not blowing much southerly in September. So he, could, he would get a couple of southerly breezes, sail a little way, anchor, and wait for the wind to come south again. It took him 22 days to get where Albany is now. Yeah. Usually it takes two days by steamer. But when he got there, the water had shallowed from 40 feet to 8 feet. And it was completely fresh. And he said, if this is the Northwest Passage, it would not be fresh water. It would be salt water. This guy was not that dumb. So he turned around and went back to England. A failure. And as I told you, <laughs> the, uh, John remembers him saying that. Yes. <laughs> Bay, he said. Well, he came that next year, 1611, to Hudson's Bay, and that's when they cast him adrift. Oh. Anyway, oh, great. Yeah. Uh, so that's the story of Henry Hudson and the Jersey Coast. Now, Jenny Buck has brought two boxes of marl. Does anybody know what marl is? Mantelloking yeah. rocks. Well, that's what I was told. They're not just mammals. They're, they're anywhere. On the shore. Have you found it yet? We don't know. 
These are, I think, man-made rocks. Really? Okay. Really? We thought they were dinosaur bones. We thought they were something that had to do with Indian. Oh, that's one of those kids. You expected them to be dinosaur bones yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, so here is what mm -hmm. the Department of Energy says they are, of all strange things. This is the first link I came to that said, okay, what is marl? Um, marl is a rock containing clay and calcium carbonate. Uh, it is formed by the erosion of other rocks during weathering as rocks erode small sedimentary particles, sand, silt, and clay, pile up on top of each other. Eventually, these sedimentary particles become compacted together. Yes. Uh, hold on, I lost my place now. Uh, <laughs> eventually, these rocks become uh, compacted together to form a new rock. The type of new rock that is formed depends on the original rock that it was eroded from and on the nature of the erosion. If the new rock contains predominantly clay and calcium carbonate, it is called marl. Uh, the most common use for marl is as a fertilizer for soils that are deficient in calcium carbonate, a.k.a. lime. M-A-R-L. Anybody wants to actually examine some, take some home? Moral, ladies and gentlemen. I have one. And the moral of the story is...